everyone. Welcome to worship at East Livingston Baptist Church. And we didn't have to shovel to get here today. Yay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Our opening hymn is an, based on uh, some ancient Christian words and music. It's a favorite of many. It's just beautiful. It lifts you up. So we're going to use that to begin our service this morning. It's called Be Thou My Vision. 2018 is going now, and uh, we look to God to give us vision for the future. So let's sing all the four verses as we praise God together with Be Thou My Vision. Norma, let's stand and join our voices in praise to God. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to same that thou art, thou must by day or by night. O thy presence, my light. Be thou my true word. I pray. Heavenly Father, as we lift our voices with these beautiful words, we do come this morning to seek your presence, to be filled with your spirit as we come together in your name. For Lord, you are the one that gives us a vision of this day and tomorrow and every day. You give us a vision that lasts into all eternity. It's an amazing thing that we celebrate as we gather this morning. And that is your love, your forgiveness, and your gift of eternal life. So fill us in this place this morning with an awareness of you that we might grow in our faith, be encouraged in our faith to serve you uh, this day and tomorrow and through the week and forever and ever. Hear us now, Lord, for we join our voices and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Take a moment now to greet one another.
All right, everybody, go ahead and uh, let's find your way back to your seat. We can continue. All right. Welcome again to the service this morning. We're glad you're able to come out and be here. Didn't have to worry about the weather as much. But uh, it's wonderful to be here on the third Sunday of January. Again, on the screen, we have uh, more pictures from our Christmas season here uh, at East Livingston Baptist Church. It was, it was truly a blessed season, so... Um, go ahead and register your attendance if you haven't had a chance to. Uh, go ahead and uh, turn your uh, cell phones off if you haven't had a chance to. And someone's already not happy. Oh, boy. I know. I, know, I feel like that. We can relate. We can relate. All right, well, it's nice to look out and see some faces. Peg and Warren, glad you're back. Amen. Betty and Carol and Gabby. You know, the weather gets terrible and it's zero out. You, you, sometimes you just can't go out. Can't breathe that air. So, so we're glad for this morning and a chance to come together. So welcome to the service. Yanjay, let's... Uh, Take a look at what's going on. Board of Trustees, I have meetings with both boards this week. The trustees will meet Tuesday. We're going to meet at 4 in the afternoon. So uh, you should have been notified by that. This is just a reminder. Then on Thursday at 7 o'clock in the evening, um, I'll meet with the Board of Deacons. So trustees, Tuesday, deacons, Thursday. We're beginning the process of transition work, looking at what needs to be done over these next six months. What can we get done? What can we start uh, looking at? So we'll keep you up to date on, on how all of that is going. So if you're on those boards, I will see you this week. And then for something more fun... Um, there are football championship games today, so we're down to the final four. We'll find out who goes to the Super Bowl t by the end of today. And that game is two weeks from today. So here at East Livingston, we've got this great tradition of inviting you to come to the church on that Sunday. So that's the, the 4th of February, two weeks. Uh, and bring uh, money to put in a soup bowl. The Super Bowl of Caring. And all the money in the Soup Bowl goes to the Mid-Ohio Food Bank. And if you put $1 in, they can buy $10 worth of food because of how they are able to purchase food. So this is a way where you can come and fellowship with your church uh, family, but also help the hungry in our community. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. So be, uh, be putting that on your calendar if you can come over for dinner that night. Um, the youth are working on a, 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 an advertisement, a commercial, an invitation for you next Sunday morning. I always like it when they do that. So uh, have that on uh, your calendar. Uh, that's mostly what's going on. Um, you can look in your bulletin and see other activities. Um, these beautiful flowers here in front of me, roses. Um, are in, uh, in memory of April's dad um, and Tommy's grandpa. Tommy's here this morning. Uh, Jim Heckethorn passed away. I think I shared that with you. And there was a, 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 a memorial service here in the sanctuary yesterday. And uh, so the family said, well, you can have these flowers for the service. So these are in, uh, in honor and memory of uh, April Gall's dad, Jim Hegathorn. So we thank the family for those beautiful flowers. All right, so that's some of what's going on in the family. I was so looking forward, to, Sue, to singing Happy Birthday today to Cassidy. 
Oh, really? You mean they're, they're coming? Oh, we'll have to cook something up. <laughs> Today is Cassidy. How old is she? Oh, my goodness. Do you remember when you were 14? The world is. You, you run the world when you were 14. So Cassie's 14 today. Well, we'll think of something. Because uh, we, we just can't miss a chance to do that. Anywho, um, those are activities. That's ministry. Glad you're here. We're looking today at the blessings of God. There's enough bad news out there. We're looking at good news today. So we're going to sing this, this hymn for our praise song. We've sung it before, but uh, you just can't not be blessed by singing this hymn. There are 10,000 reasons that we can bless God today and more. And that's the title of the song. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So let's go ahead and sing Bless the Lord, O my soul.
Don't you feel better? Yes. I can't sing that song without being lifted up. Amen. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Yeah. Beautiful singing, by the way. Sounded great hearing your voices there. I see our ushers. That means it's time for our morning tithes and offerings. So why don't I invite them to come forward as uh, we lift up our... Uh, giving to God. God has blessed us in all these ways and uh, part of the way we answer the call to stewardship and discipleship is through our giving. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and we, as we've been singing, we can't count the ways. There's so many ways in which you bless us. So now we come to this time of, uh, of giving, of uh, bringing our offerings to you. Lord, we pray you would use these offerings to touch the lives of others who are searching for you. Life can be difficult, and you have the answer for us. You have forgiveness and hope and eternal life, and that's what we all need. So we pray that these gifts will make an impact in this world by, by sharing this gospel message in so many different ways. Bless each gift and each one who gives, and we'll give you the thanks and the praise. We'll bless your name as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you. you may be seated and it is time for junior church so boys and girls you can go ahead and make your way to the lower level for our junior church program Marie Desimore is our helper today our leader and we thank her for her ministry uh, with our children they have a, a really good great time learning about Jesus in the junior church. So, so as we come to our time of uh, prayer this morning, uh, we have extended sympathy to April and her family. Um, also, you'll see in the meeting, in the bulletin this morning, Philip Crusoe lost his sister. So Philip, we extend our uh, our sympathy and condolences. His sister Martha Johnson passed away in Liberia. So that's two of our family members uh, this week. And then let me share this uh, letter with you. This is from the president of the American Baptist Churches of Ohio. And it's about our uh, executive minister, Dr. Ernest Jones. He has been here on a couple occasions. He's the minister that was called when Larry Swain, a member of our church, retired a couple years ago. And uh, Dr. Jones uh, is about a, a year and a half, I think, into a battle with liver cancer. And uh, so we got this uh, letter this week. Um, uh, he didn't pass away. I don't want to get you scared. He, he's, he's with us very much. But here's a letter about, it, about him. Um, Reverend Willis says to us, I'm writing to you to inform you that Reverend Dr. Ernest Jones, Executive Minister of American Baptist Church of Ohio, will be granted a medical leave of absence from his duties beginning uh, Thursday, January 18th, last Thursday, due to his current health situation. We encourage you to uplift, encourage, and pray for Dr. Jones and his wife, Denise, during this time. What that means is that uh, Dr. Jones' condition is worse, and uh, the board felt it was uh, appropriate to give him a medical leave to um, really focus on his health. So uh, we've had Dr. Jones on our prayer list ever since he had surgery. But when there are changes like that, I want to share that with you. So uh, we want to be praying with our Ohio Baptist family. Um, and I'll, I'll, if, if I get any other Updates, I'll be sure, and I'll pass those along to you. But pray for uh, Ernest and Denise um, as they go into this uh, medical leave. So that's why we pray. We, uh, we have loved ones that, that need God's help. And um, So let's go to our time of prayer this morning as we lift to the Lord uh, our concerns and, and our praises. Let us pray. Loving God, we do come into your presence in prayer this morning, and we lift high your name, we worship you, we praise you, O oh God. You've invited us into your presence in prayer, you've told us to pray without ceasing, to be in constant communication with you in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. And so we come this morning in prayer. You alone are worthy to receive all glory and honor. And we lift that glory and honor to you from our hearts this morning as we begin our time of prayer. We thank you, God, for your forgiveness and for your mercy, for accepting our confession of guilt and for granting us your amazing grace. We thank you, God, that you 
made it possible for us to gather for worship this morning in this beautiful sanctuary. We, we don't take it for granted that we can gather. We're, we're grateful for these moments. They're, they're precious to us and very meaningful. So we thank you for making it possible and we thank you for being with us in this past week. Uh, for some, a time of uh, memorial services. For others, a time of celebration. Uh, for many others, um, more the, the routine of each day of going to school, going to work, uh, being involved in activities. Whatever we've done in this past week, God, we know, we know that you have been with us. And as we pray this day, we thank you for that. We thank you for your constant presence. It lifts us up. It gives us strength. We thank you for that vision that we sang about earlier that, that shines a, a light of your love on the path before us and that gives us direction and where you show us where to go. We're grateful, God, for this kind of a relationship that we have with you. And as we gather for worship this morning, we lift up to you those who have uh, concerns and stresses and needs in their life this morning, for there are some who are in hospitals today. We, we remember them in prayer. We ask that you be with them. We pray for those in nursing homes. We pray for those who are in their own home this morning, unable to be with us. Lord, it's difficult when we face these uh, times of bad health, and uh, we, we lean on you and we look to you for strength and for health. So we pray this morning for each one that, uh, that all of us have in our minds and, and on our hearts this morning as we come together for this service. And we thank you, Lord, that you uh, extend your strength and, and your healing Lord, life brings us uh, surprises each day. And so I ask that you give us uh, insight, that you give us wisdom, that you give us patience in the living of our days as we try to, to live as your disciples. We try to live uh, by the, the, the love that you showed to us. We try to share that with others. But Lord, it's not always easy. So we, we pray again for for the strength that comes through your Holy Spirit, that we might share this gospel, we might live it out uh, in our lives, in our neighborhoods, in our families. I pray for all who are here this morning, Lord, who, who carry a burden that keeps them up at night, that worries them, that, that causes them uh, stress on a daily basis. Lord, sometimes this is how life can be. And so we come to you this morning and we, we acknowledge that you are the one that gives us a peace that passes all understanding. We pray for the hearts of anyone who is uh, mourning uh, the loss of loved ones this morning. We pray for the strength to carry, uh, to carry on and to move through that, that long, long process of, of saying goodbye and, and managing the grief. For, Lord, you are the one that takes us by the hand and guides us through that. So, Lord, each of us lift up prayers to you this morning. Some we write on a list and some we speak, but we all have issues and people in our, in our hearts this morning. So we lift them up to you this morning. We especially remember our executive minister for he's so important to uh, all of our churches around Ohio. We pray for his wife, Denise. Calm her heart, Lord, and lift her up as uh, she faces this crisis with uh, her husband. And again, Lord, for all of us in our congregation, we look to you. We thank you for the times where you deliver us and strengthen us and it helps us to not only love you, God, but share that love with others as we give a testimony of what you have done for us. 
So remain with us, we pray and we ask in this service. Speak to us in the words of Scripture. Be with us in our fellowship, in our, in our music, in all that we do here, God. We pray you would use it to, to uplift us and to edify us and to help us to grow in our faith, to apply that as we live for you. So God, hear our prayers. We offer our prayers in confidence and with thanksgiving. We thank you for loving us through your son, Jesus Christ. And as we pray, we pray in his precious name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. And don't be afraid, it's going to be okay. For some people that book is like, whoa, but it's going to be just fine. We're going to look this morning at some verses in chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7. The reading begins at verse 13 and uh, goes down through verse 17, which is the last verse of that chapter. So we begin at verse 13 in Revelation chapter 7, and we read the remainder of that chapter. So Revelation 7, beginning at verse 13. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So may God bless to our hearts this morning the reading of this portion of Holy Scripture. So I mentioned to you earlier we're focusing this morning on good news, you know. Because um, you don't have to go very far to hear a lot of bad news, crazy news, scary news. Um, a quick look at the dispatch this morning. Well, let's see. Our government is shut down. Let's start there, you know. Um, there's been a lot of debates continuing about immigration policies. In the U.S., some of them very, very ugly. Um, then we've been hearing more and more, you know, about military ambitions in North Korea, how their leaders trying to develop nuclear weapons. Everywhere we look, our daily lives confront us with stress. It seems on every side. There's a lot of a lot of bad news uh, out there to be had. And it's not just out there in our world. Stress and pain and sorrow come to us on a very personal level. I was just yesterday looking at my Facebook page. Mary Woods, a, a friend of mine, uh, was, was posting about losing a friend of hers from high school. And, and uh, Mary is younger than I am. This, this is not... Uh, someone who's would be expecting to hear about the loss of a friend. She wrote, my high school friend died this morning. She fought a battle with cancer. Growing up, she won most of her battles. From the time we were young kids at school, I could see her calm eyes actually twinkle when she looked at you. Her broad smile actually made your day better. And her laughter actually lifted your life to a brighter place. She could put a sentence to any tense situation 
and turn it into a laughable moment. God bless you for your friendship to us. That's part of Mary's post. The news that we have to deal with can be very, very personal. Like we just said, two of our own church family, April and Philip, have lost family members just in these last week or two. Life, as we all know, it can be, especially some days, hard. For we live, we live in a broken world. That's what the Bible tells us. Sin and the evidence of sin brings darkness into our world. And so that's the bad news. There's plenty of it. So this morning, let's shine a light of some good news from the word of God to be reminded that the good news is always just as close as a, a prayer. We look to these words from uh, the book of Revelation and in chapter 7 among the description of the opening of the seven seals which we're not going to go into this morning there's this short interlude and Revelation has several of these interludes. And this one speaks powerfully of the living hope that we have as followers of Jesus Christ. That's the sermon title this morning, our living hope. This hope is the kind that can give a person reason for living. It's like the sun that shines in the middle of a dark winter's day. It breaks through. And I'm glad to listen to these words of promise this morning as we work our way into this new year, 2018. Good news, a living hope. Uh, Victor Frankl is a name that some of you might know. Victor Frankl is a man who knew about hope. He was a successful Austrian neurologist and psychiatrist. He was arrested during the horrific reign of Nazi Germany back in the Second World War. He was put into a concentration camp, but he survived. He's one of the survivors. And as, as he uh, put his life back together after the war, he wrote a book, and it's, it's a famous book. You can find it on Amazon. It's called Man's Search for Meaning. His time in the concentration camp took him deep within his own life, and he wrote about man's search for meaning, and in that book, here's something he said. He said, there's nothing in the world that would so effectively help one to survive even the worst conditions as the knowledge that there is meaning in one's life. There is nothing in the world that would be so effectively help one to survive even the worst conditions as the knowledge that there is meaning in one's life. So that's what our scripture teaches us today about how to live lives that have meaning, even in the midst of this lost and broken world. You know, The Bible has the good news, even if we live in a world that has a lot of bad news. So in Revelation chapter 7, uh, the Apostle John, who was given this vision, this revelation of God that he wrote down for us, John shares a vision of a great multitude of people that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne of God and in front of the Lamb who is Jesus. So John describes this, and he tells us that they were wearing these white robes. They were holding palm branches in their hands. And that they cried out in a loud voice. And they said, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And John goes on describing this scene. He says, then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? This is from our text this morning. I answered, sir, you already know. And he said, well, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, that language for some of us is very familiar. 
The Bible speaks of a, a great tribulation where Christian people will be severely tested. But then the word for tribulation here can also mean persecution. John was uh, writing to a church that was persecuted. The Roman government had decided Christians were uh, an enemy of the state and they were being rounded up, they were being arrested, they were being uh, executed. So, so John has in mind the great uh, apocalypse, the, the end of days, but he also has in mind what's happening all around him, just as we can look out our windows and apply the words of scripture to what's happening to us. A careful study of how the term persecution is used, not only in Revelation, but uh, throughout the rest of the New Testament, uh, reveals that as Christians, we all experience persecution when we live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ in this world. And Jesus talked a lot about this. If we take up our cross and follow him, we're not promised that it's going to be easy. We're, we're, we're told and we're warned there will be many who will come against you. So while on this earth there can be no doubt that pain and suffering will be a part of any Christian's life, and, and really if you think about this, if that were not the case, it would mean our hearts were so hardened that uh, we didn't understand the pain of this world and it would be impossible to actually be following Jesus. Um, this compassion that we have as Christians is part of what it means to be a follower of Christ. We see the suffering of this world. We even sometimes know the suffering of this world. But then the Bible says we can look beyond it. We can look to the hope of Christ's promised future. We can look to the salvation of God. So this vision of Revelation moves us from this important message about the reality of, of suffering in this world, moves us on to a vision of how victory is finally won. And this victory is so different than the visions of victory offered to us by our culture, by our world. And, that, and this is true. A lot of time, the message we get from the world and the culture and the society around us is that, hey, the one, and I know you've heard this before, the one with the most toys wins, right? You've heard that. Um, I see this other one a lot. The one with the most power wins. Hmm. Now those sayings about material possessions and power, that's not the message of the Bible. When we hear and we see the message of Jesus, we come to understand Christian victory actually comes in surrender. Sometimes even in death. What does the Bible say? When we die to the ways of this world, we find Christ, new life in Christ. When we die to ourselves, we are raised with Christ. The Bible says, you know, this is how we actually become victors. The book of Romans says we are conquerors, but not because we escape persecution. Jesus didn't escape persecution. We are conquerors because when we rise with Christ, or as Revelation puts it, when we allow our garments to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, then we become children of God. Children not born of flesh and blood or a parent's will, but children born of God. This is the good news that the Bible proclaims to us. The word salvation, many of you know, literally means to be saved, which is why we say, oh, yeah, I got saved in 1973. Because that word saved comes from the word salvation. God's rescue plan is found only in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Which means the question for all of us this morning is have we allowed God to rescue us from the slavery of sin and death? Have you washed your robe and made it white in the blood 
of the Lamb? That's the question. Because when we do, we are in the company of those who are described for us here in chapter 7. When we allow our sins to be forgiven by the blood of our Savior Jesus, when we commit ourselves to him, we will be found praising God forever and ever. We will be in the multitude standing before the throne of God and in front of the Lamb. Jesus, the Lamb of God, will be our shepherd who will lead us to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. This is the good news that we must never forget and never let get drowned out by the bad news around us. Through our faith, we have Christ within us. And with Jesus then, even the worst of circumstances can be overcome. This is our living hope that comes from our living faith in our living Lord. Why have you come to seek the living among the dead? But, okay, there's a but. Watch out. Even with all of this evidence of victory in Jesus, the world and the devil will try to steal our joy and our hope. So let's go back to uh, go back to the Peanuts cartoons. The scripture as according to Snoopy, right? In one of the cartoons, Snoopy is thinking to himself, yesterday I was a dog. Today I'm a dog. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll probably still be a dog. And then he, oh, there's so little hope for advancement. That's what Snoopy said. So little hope for advancement. But we don't want to be like that. We have 10,000 reasons to hope and more. We can't count them all. Uh, there's been a lot of bad hurricanes around we're still trying to help the damage in Puerto Rico from the, the hurricane damage this year um, we're very cognizant of some of this damage and how we can reach out and help back in September in 1988 there was a bad hurricane it was Hurricane Gilbert that came up the Gulf and hit the Louisiana coast that was before Katrina in 2005, this was back in, in 88. But Gilbert was a big, bad storm. And it battered the shoreline uh, of Louisiana and um, the, the Gulf states. And it especially disrupted one of the businesses that's big in that area, and that is shrimp. Uh, the shrimping industry and all the shrimp boats and all of that. Uh, a lot of damage to that, to the, the, the many shrimp boats that were lost in the storm. There was a lot of concern for the families that were dependent on uh, the catching and processing of shrimp for their, for their income. But one morning on the morning news down in that uh, area of the country, there was an interview with one of the men who owned a shrimp boat and that was his livelihood and that's how he fed his family and, and all these things and he was asked you know about this storm and how terrible it was and when they said to him you know how is this storm going to impact not just you but the other uh, businessmen who make their living with the uh, uh, shrimp he thought of the devastation of Gilbert, but at one point he said, you know, there is a good side. He said, this storm will have stirred up the bottom of the ocean, and that makes it for better shrimping once we're able to get back out there. Okay? Now, there's a man who understands hope, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's bad, 
But I've got some good news. I have hope for tomorrow. It might look like Good Friday. But Sunday's coming. Right? Right? The storms come. We all know that. Some more than others. But Good Friday isn't the last word. When they went to the tomb on Sunday morning, the angel said, why do you seek the living? Sunday is coming. So, back to the questions we're asking ourselves. What and who will we choose? Will we continue in misguided ways and stay apart and away from God? Will we be among the crowd in the throne room? There's a choice. Will we be part of God's rescue effort, salvation? Will we allow the light of Christ to flow from us and out into the light that God has to shine through us in this lost and dark and broken world? Will we be part of that rescue effort? There is great meaning to our lives after all. And that is because Jesus Christ has won the victory. And now Jesus is with us. I will be with you, he said, even until the end of the age. And knowing this then transforms us. It transforms our struggles, our faith, and our life in Christ gives us all a living hope. A hope that shines no matter what the circumstances. And then, according to what we read in God's word this morning, praise God, we will find ourselves joining in with the great multitude and saying glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to God forever and ever because he who sits on the throne will shelter us with his presence. Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Folks, there is good news. Now... And forever. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we read these words, they strike a chord with us and within us. We need to hear the good news. <laughs> and the devil wants to do nothing but shower us with bad news. So, Lord, this morning we're glad to read these words that have been with us now for 2,000 years, but they show us the good news that cannot be overcome, the good news that cannot be shouted down, the good news that can't be twisted, the good news that can't be spun. It's the good news of your love for us as we see in your son Jesus Christ born in a manger, who lived, died on a cross, and rose again on that Easter Sunday so that our sins would be forgiven, so that the Holy Spirit would empower us in our daily life, so that we can have a reason for getting up in the morning. We can have a hope that will carry us through and that one day we'll stand with you and we'll praise you forever. So, Lord, we celebrate that good news this morning. We reaffirm it. We grab hold of it once again as we give you thanks and commit ourselves to continuing to be that light that you've called us to be in sharing that good news with those who need to hear. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
So our closing hymn says this good news is one of blessed assurance. For Jesus has died and risen again to give us the promise of everlasting life. And this hymn is a, a favorite of, of many of us uh, over the years in the church because of the words that it proclaims, written by the famous hymn writer Fanny Crosby. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We have good news, and so we praise God. The hymn says we, we praise God all day long. The scripture says we'll praise him forever. Indeed, this is good news. If you're here this morning, you've never opened your heart to Jesus as your Savior and let him forgive you of your sin and give you that gift of salvation, we certainly pray with you you would do that and begin to live this this life that has meaning and purpose and power through uh, the presence of God in our life. And you can share that with us by joining me here at the front. Um, I'm going to sing all three verses because this hymn really says it all and lifts us up. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Norma, let's stand as we sing all three verses of blessed assurance. Present assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortune, glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Yes. Oh, Something just happened. Have you did you did you did you notice that? There have been many people that have been praying, and uh, many prayers have been answered this morning. We know Philip. Philip's been with us. Uh, Emma's husband. He's been doing a lot of work with you, Fred, behind the scenes. So um, we've appreciated all that. But there was one choice Philip still had to make, and that. He comes today to make that. He says, yeah, I want to be a part of East Livingston. Now, Christopher, this young man, the young, young man when Linda and I came, so we've seen him grow up. This is his day to proclaim, I trust the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So there are hugs, there are tears. And all of this, you know, the Bible says this is what the angels do. They rejoice in heaven when any of us turn to the Lord. So a day of rejoicing, and uh, we're happy with Emma as she celebrates this joy in her family. So uh, we will follow up with the deacons, with uh, Christopher, with Philip, and uh, we'll be planning a baptism service um, before long. And... Uh, We'll praise God as we, as we ask God's blessing on, on Chris and on Philip for this decision this morning. So this is 
This is good news, folks. All right. So I'm going to have our prayer benediction, and as I like to do, I'm going to ask Philip and Chris just to stay here so you can join in, uh, in uh, letting them know how happy you are for their decision today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we're humbled by your, your goodness to us, um, uh, how you fill us with your spirit, how you give us the promises of meaning in this life and hope for everlasting uh, it, it never uh, gets old. It, it never loses its power. And this morning, especially as Philip and Christopher step out in faith and make their declarations of faith and of following you, we ask, Lord, that you bless both of these men, uh, that you walk with them, that you strengthen them uh, as they live for you in a world that sometimes doesn't, uh, doesn't welcome that. So, so strengthen them and empower them to, to live for you. Uh, Lord, go with all of us now as a church family as we conclude our service time here. We begin our service time outside of these walls. So use us this week to, to take this good news of your son Jesus Christ and your love for us uh, into this world in any way that we can. And we'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.